Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at filleting in a number of situations and why the fillet will fail. So we're going to go through a number of scenarios, not just this simple scenario here, but we're going to look at more complex scenarios and how we get around those problems with filleting by first understanding the reasons they fail, the precautions that we can put in place and the solutions around that failure by fixing the issues with our geometry. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at the challenges around Felicity. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header, on the about page, or in the descriptions of these videos. So all these examples I'm going to be showing you use the part design. They are the same for the part as well, the same rules apply. We're just starting with a normal rectangle block. So this is from a sketch, as you can see the sketch is here, and it's been padded up at 20 millimeters. Now remember this value of 20 millimeters. Just click on the sketch, press the space bar to hide it. I'm going to fill it this edge. So I'm going to start with a single edge, select to that edge, and we'll apply the fillet. The fillet is successful at one millimeters. If we start to increase the fillet, you can see we're filleting absolutely fine. But when it starts to fail, is that if we share the same edge as one that's existing. So this edge here, you can see we're at 90 millimeters. So if I fill it to the height of the object, which is a 20 millimeters, it's going to fail. What I need to do is back this off so it doesn't share that edge. So at the moment it's sharing this edge at 20 millimeters. So if I set this to 19.9 millimeters, you can see, if I zoom right in, we're not actually sharing that edge there. And that's placed 19.99. And you can see what we've done there. So we filled it right up to the edge, but not shared it. And this is a successful fillet. So if we want to fill it right up to the edge, we have to back off slightly by points of a millimeter. This is the same if we go back I'm going to set this to one millimeter. It's the same if we select another edge. So I'm going to select this edge here. So I selected opposite edges. Now, if I bring this up, we start filleting from both edges. And again, we mustn't share the edge where these meet. So if we meet in the middle, which is at 10 millimeters, we can see nine fine. If we set this to 10, it's going to fail. Again, we have to back off. So 9.9. .9. You can see we've got a little face here. We're not sharing that edge, so it's successful. 9.99. .9. And we've got basically a single edge there. But if we zoom right in, we've got this, which will probably won't show up on 3D printing. So this little face here. If we look at it further away, it's going to do for the single edge. So as you can see, that's successful. So if we start sharing an edge with a fillet, then this can fail. Where it doesn't fail is in this scenario. So that's get rid of the fillet and the pad and just leave the sketch there. And I can come into the sketch and change this. Just delete the geometry within and I'm going to add a polyline and I'm going to create something a bit different. So I'm adding two edges that go this way and I say a single edge. Let's join these back up and close that. So we've got this shape now and I'm going to pad that and that's say 50 millimeters. So we've got this shape here. So I'm going to bring this around to this side. If I take this edge, so this one here, if I can get it, and if I can't get this, I can increase the edge size 
or the line size by going to the pad and look at the view or going to the body and look at the view and increasing the line size in here here we go line width or i can come up to the view draw style and wireframe therefore i can just click on that edge quite easily and i can add the fillet if i increase that we can see the fillets in there so you can see that increasing let's come up to the view draw style and look at the flat lines so we can see it so you can see that for that's been taken in there and if we increase this out let's use the page up to increase this more you can see how that's going out so we're approaching that edge here and if we cross that edge you can see it fails so this 173 174 and we're crossing that edge and it fails so we're crossing onto a non-planar face let's cancel that and do it from this edge so i'm going to take this edge now this one here and do the fillet so when i say non-planar face it's not planar this one is not plain as this one they're both on different planes and you can see this as i approach this line here this edge as i cross it then it fails now if i come back into the sketcher and make these two edges parallel using the parallel constraint and hit close now these are planar so they're all along one plane i can create one single edge along here so if i take this edge and use the fillet and increase this as we cross this face it's going to take as you can see we've consumed that face and it's taken absolutely fine until we start to consume this edge here because it's not planar you can see it's gone into error if i hit ok it's going to error we know it's planar because if we cancel that and come into the pad we'll select the data and come down and what we're looking for is the refine so what this does if i hover over this go back in that refine if i hover over it we can see it cleans up redundant edges after adding or subtracting so this is a redundant edge here because the two faces here are planar to each other so if i click on refine and set this to true you'll see this edge disappear so this is important to recognize this because if we have something like this let's come in and what we'll do we'll delete this and add this shape here so just basically a cube like so and i'm going to sketch on this face so new sketch let's pull in some of the geometry so let's pull in this edge and what i'm going to do is add another piece of geometry in here like so and this rectangle i've added will create a planar face along here because it's in line with this face and it's along the same plane so if i hit close and use a pad you can see these are along the same plane. Okay, so this is the same plane, and this is the same plane here. If I take this edge and create a fillet, we consume the other edge. Absolutely fine. So we've got a fillet on there, which will be fine if I hit OK, it takes. Let's delete that fillet. But if I try to consume these two edges with a fillet, so this one and control click this one, so we've got those two edges selected there and use a fillet across those, see straight away it fails. Hit OK, fail to create fillet. Let's cancel that. Let's hit OK and cancel that. If I select this edge 
and create a fillet, it's only going to fill it as sedge. So you can see that because I've created a planar face here from our sketch, then it's acting like it's almost two parts. Now, if I take this edge and this edge, what I want to do is create a fillet across these two. I don't want to take this edge, fillet this edge, and bring up, say, six, and then do the same on this one, fillet that, and bring it out to six. And though we can, it doesn't look very neat in there. But what we can do is the same as the refine. So we're going to get rid of these two faces because, well, we can create this as one sketch if we wanted to. But if I select the pad and look for the refine. So we're coming down to the part design refine. Drop this down so this is true. These two faces will become one. And I can select this edge now, when I add the fillet, we can add the fillet to one edge, but I also can select the other edge now as well. So I've added two edges there. When I increase the fillet, you can see we now have this fillet on both sides without any failure and also without an additional face in here. So refining an object such as this can get you out of that trouble. We've learned that when faces start to meet, then that can cause an issue with filleting if we're not careful. So we saw where these faces meet here. Let's set up a scenario where this will affect us with something that has more of a curvature. So I'm going to go back to the sketch. Get rid of this one. Let's delete the pad as well. This one here. And double click that sketch. Delete the geometry inside. And what I'm going to do is make a curve in here made of an arc and a line. So let's create an arc in here. And let's go up this point here. So along this axis and we'll create an arc. Let's pick the right one. Let's use the end point and rim point arc. That's better. Create this arc in here. Hit escape. And we're going to use the polyline to close this geometry. So I'm going to come down and you can see it's going off to the side here. This is because of the mode that this is in. Now with the polyline, we've got the M key, which cycles behavior. So at the moment, this is going off with tangency to this arc this way. So if I hit M on the keyboard, you can see what we've got now. We've gone down this way and I've accidentally clicked. Let's control Z that and start again. So click on this one. We've got going this way. So M on the keyboard goes down this way. M again and we're free. So M cycles those modes. I'm going to come down and that's connect up down here somewhere. Come across and come up and connect to this one. So we've got an arc and a line here. Let's close that and pad them both and hit OK. So we've padded that in there. Let's look at the top. So we've got this shape. If I take this arc and use a fillet in there, you can see it's failed. If I hit OK, resulting shape is invalid. OK, and cancel that. This is near tangency constraints. And it's the flow between this line and this arc. If I come into that sketch and look at that and tweak this a bit, let's bring this down so it's more tangent and hit close and add the fillet again. We can see that's taken now and hit OK. So it's taken there. So when we're near tangent, this can cause an issue. So if I take this and from the middle and bring this out and hit close, you can see our fillet has failed. If we create tangency against these two, 
make those tangents, hit OK, and close. You can see our fillet has passed and has been applied. Come back to that sketch. The same if we take that and let's take the vertical constraint off. If we start bringing this in, let's bring these two together and use a coincident. And we start bringing this in. See this angle it's creating here? So it's coming in, it's creating this sharp angle. I say close. You can see the fillet has failed. So bringing this out slightly and bring this to its more tangent, it allows it to take. But if we bring this right in, so let's try to create this kind of effect so we get a change in angle and close that, then as you can see, it has taken on this side, but not on this side. So you can see what's happened there. And we're getting some odd fillet in around this area. Click on this edge and add a fillet on here. And you can see that, well, it's failing to fillet that edge. So when we've got this near tangency issue or these sharp angles where a straight line and curve is included in there, then we start to get problems. We need to smooth out this curve in here, which can be done by coming in and using the fillet on here. So as in a fillet on the sketch. So we look at the fillet, this one here, and we fill it between this one and this one to make this smoother. Notice where I added the points, it will add that fillet between those two points, hit close, then we get a much smoother transition between those two, and this fillet will take. Remember we're looking at the same workflow as you would if you was creating this out of wood. If you have those sharp angles, and you want to add fillets, it's a lot harder than when you have something that transitions smoothly. If it's hard to do it in real life, then it's going to be hard to do it in the digital world. Whilst we're looking at curved objects, let's look at something where the curve is in three planes. So let's get rid of that fillet and redo this sketch. I'm going to go from this point and add an endpoint and rim point arc that comes up this way. And another one, and we're going to create some tangency against these. And I'll say another one here as well. So we've got three arcs. I'm going to use a tangent and make these two tangent with each other, and also these two tangent with each other. And we'll use the polyline and create a line that connects up along here to here. So we've got this at the moment. Let's hit close. So we've got this arc going this way, tangent arc, and it's got padding in there. So it's padded. I'm going to draft this now. So I'm going to take the top and use a draft. And we'll give it some angle. So we'll bring this up and we we'll need to stop the plane from moving. So let's click on a neutral plane and select this edge here and bring this up. So let's make sure, there we go, bring this up. So we've got something like this. That's okay that. And what we're going to do is come into the pad and reduce the height. So we're just bringing this down. Let's cancel that, make it easier on ourselves by coming into the pad itself. And we've got the length here. Let's drop this down to something like two. Refresh that on the keyboard, Control R or Edit, Refresh. So basically we've got a wedge with an arc that goes this way. So let's bring this around this way. What I want to do is create a fillet that runs along this whole length. 
Now, remember we were saying about consuming faces that are not planar. So these two aren't planar. If I take this edge and start to fill it, it will run all the way around here successfully. And you can see it's coming off the bottom here, but everything's fine. We're adding this fillet along here. Everything's fine. Now, as we move, you can see this edge here is approaching this edge. The minute it crosses, it's almost crossed there, it will go into failure. So anything before that, it's fine. Anything after it, it will fail. But I want to add a fillet all the way along here. And I want to cross this edge. I want to make this nice and curved. Now there are a number of ways of doing this. We could use a subtractive pipe in there where we take material away in a curve around here. And I go into this in my comb build for one of the patron requests. So I create a profile on these two edges and subtractive pipe this away. Another way of doing it is basically to make this all one edge. So I want a B spline that runs this way rather than an arc. So how do we convert that to a B spline? So we've got these here. So we have to convert these to a B spline, a single B spline. Now there's tools in the curves workbench to do this, the join curves in there. That's different to the sketcher join curves. That's set up this so it's fully constrained. So I'm going to set a length in here. So we've got a length and we've got a height. Okay, that. So we've got those two set up in there and make this point and this axis object on object constraint. And now I can set some radius in here with this one. And this one. Matter of fact, let's cancel those. Let's get rid of this one as well. I'm going to take all of these. And I'm going to lock them down with a block constraint. So I've blocked those from moving. I'm now going to take this arc, select those, all three arcs, and change them to construction geometry. So those are now construction geometry. I'm now going to sketch my single B spline using the B spline tool. Make sure nothing's selected, select the B spline tool, connect it to this point, to this one here, and I'm going to use one, two, three points. But I'm not going to connect them to these points. So I'm just going to drop them by the side, just below, and then connect up to this point here. Right mouse button to cancel, and we've got our B spline in there. Right mouse button or escape again to get the mouse pointer back. So we've got the B spline laid down, and you can see that there. So what we have, we have tangency here. You can see the tangent constraints. I want to attach this B spline to this arc. Now I can do this by getting it into place and moving it about like so. So this is the kind of arc that I want, but I can use these points. So I take this point and this B spline, I can use the point on object constraint. But you can see we've got some problems with redundant constraints. If I look, number two is this constraint here, the tangency. Let's hit delete after selecting it. And now I can move this into place and I advise doing this one point at a time and getting this into place. Now I'm going to take this B spline and this point, and we might get some problems with constraints, and I always can use the control Z to go back. So I'm going to use the point on object constraint there. We've got redundant constraint, which is number eight. And I'm not sure which one that is. So it's this one here, which is a point on object constraint. If I click that, you can see it's going to this one here, which is a bit strange. So I'm just gonna hit Control Z. And I'm gonna get rid of this tangency. This one here, so 
We're looking at the constraints around this point. Let's delete that. This should be all still locked down. Let's take this piece spline and this point and use a point on object constraint. So now we've got this all locked down. And we can't move this and that's nicely in there. So what we've got now is that I've replaced, let's get rid of this draft and delete that. I've replaced that sketch of multiple arcs with a B spline. So you can see that there. That's a single B spline and I've used the arc as guidance for this construction geometry. Hit close. Our pad has taken, and I just need to draft this. So that's draft the top using the draft tool. And let's add an angle to the draft, bring this up. Now I do. It was eight degrees last time, I believe, something like that. Let's okay that. And now if I take this edge and use the fillet. I can fill at this to how far I want. As long as I don't consume this edge running along here, the opposite edge. If I consume that, you can see it goes over. So 9.9. .9. Let's try it. 9.3. And we just work backwards. 9.4. And now we've got that nice curvature in there. Let's okay that. And we've got the fillet taken all the way along there using the B spline instead of the arcs. So we don't get those extra faces in there. So let's move on to another one that may occur. And that's when we have text. So this is often when we have text. Let's get rid of the draft. And that's come back in this sketch and delete everything in here. Let's highlight that and delete. Let's say we had an M in here. And I'm going to sketch this. We could use the shape string if we wanted to. Matter of fact, let's close that. And delete the pad, delete the sketch. Come over to the draft workbench. And we'll set the plane. So utilities select plane. Nothing selected at the moment. So we're looking at the top plane, looking down on the top. And we'll add the shape string in here. So we'll go up to draft in, shape from text. And we're going to add some text in here. So the string we're going to use, let's say let's go for an M in here. And the font file we need to use. Now I'm on Ubuntu. So this is going to be in my user. Share. Go by name. Fonts, it's a true type font, and I'll just use the Deja Vu and one of those. So I've got an M in here, and let's reset the point, the height, let's go for about 60. We can change this if we want to, and hit OK. So we've got this around the wrong way. Let's bring this around to here and zoom in. So we've got the M and come back to the part design and we'll drop that inside the body and click on the shape string and pad this. So it's disappeared. Well, we need to look at the fit all to bring it back into position. And we'll set this to whatever width we want. That's okay that I've still got the grid in on, which is over in the draft. Let's turn that off in the draft. Turn the grid in off. And let's have a look at the part design. So we've got our M in here. Now, if I wanted to fillet this edge, we'll just click on the edge, add the fillet. So we've got that one there. And we need to be aware, if we start filleting, we need to be aware of crossing here and also consuming other faces as well. So consuming this face, but not crossing here. So we have to be careful of multiple faces and edges that run around this. Let's select another edge and select this one as well. So now when we start to fill it, 
you can see, well, we're starting to come out of this edge here. So if we cross that edge, it's going to start fixing that by adding this tangent arc here. But we again, we have to be careful if the bottom of the arc comes out the bottom here, or if we come out the sides of here. So text can be quite hard to fill it because we have a number of edges to deal with, especially if we're trying to fill it, say, all of these. So we're looking at all edges around the top, add the filler there. Then we've got multiple edges to deal with, and we just have to be aware of the boundaries that that could cross. So when we start crossing the boundaries, you can see start falling off the sides, and though we haven't fallen off the sides here. So we have multiple lengths of fillets that we have to deal with. Let's cancel that. So one other place that we need to be wary of when we're filleting is if we're creating geometry and we've got some problems with coincident constraints. So let's get rid of this shape string in here, delete that and the pad. And we'll create a sketch along the XY plane. Though I won't do this, let's create an endpoint and rim point arc, and I'm going to make a circle using symmetry. So we've got our arc, and let's do it coincident to this point here using the coincident constraint, and we'll take the arc, this line, and reflect it with symmetry using the symmetry tool. So what we've got is two arcs that are actually coincident to each other without coincident constraints. This is valid. If I close that, take the sketch and pad it, you see this pad successfully, and I can take the edge and add a fillet. And the fillet is successful. But the geometry underneath is fragile because we haven't got those coincident constraints added. They are coincident, but they're not constrained. Let's come into the pad and look at the sketch. Let's say I take this arc here and add a radius. So 49.03, let's just make this 49. So we've got that one there. We've still got this side. So 49.03, let's set this to 50. So what's happened, because I've rounded it up, I've created a gap in here. If I zoom in, you can see this gap in here. This means this wire is not closed. If I hit close, we get an error on the pad saying why not closed, and we get the fillets with a tick by it saying everything needs a recompute. If I go there to edit and refresh, then you can see it can't refresh because our pad is broken. So wire not closed will result in that fillet to fail. If I double click on the fillet and hit OK, though it has failed, it's the last operation. So it's still showing. Let's delete that. The pad is still in error. So if I try to add the fillet, add the fillet, you can see that everything has disappeared and it's actually failed. But simple as coming in, selecting those two, making them coincident, same down the bottom, coincident constraint on those, close those. It is now closed geometry, it's a closed wire, and the fillet will take absolutely fine. So you can see that there. So there are areas where a fillet can fail. There are other areas, but those are the most common. As said, we can get around those by changing the geometry, the way it's made up. Sometimes it will get to the point where you can't apply the fillet. 
There are other ways of plying a fillet. We can fake a fillet by adding a subtractive pipe to remove material for the fillet. We can use that in the par as well. In the par, the fillets are slightly different in that we have an option to apply a fillet. Let's delete that. Go to part. And we're just going to apply a fillet via the part. I know it's in the part design workflow. This is not recommended. I'm just showing you on an existing object. And if we add the fillet, you can see we've got all the edges that we want to add the fillet to. So I can select those. Control select those. So we've got those two there. And we've got a constant radius or we've got a variable radius. So we can apply different radiuses of fillet. And okay that. But depending on the shape, then the variable radius may not apply for this shape. In this case, it wouldn't apply for this. So we would have to use a constant radius because those edges are planar to each other. If they weren't, let's take off those edges and just use this one and this one and set these to variable radius one and five and okay that you can see they apply correctly across there. We've got one of five and the other one, which was a different radius of one. As said, it's not recommended to use the filleting for a part workflow with the part design because we're crossing workbenches there in an unsafe manner. We can mix those two workbenches, but only in specific ways. So I hope that gives you an idea of how to fix the fillet issues that you may account in free CAD and an understanding of how those fillets will fail. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again in the new one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B E Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.